today we're going to be looking at a little bunny. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel Casualistic and hi to my new subscribers, thank you for joining me. Um, well, so apologies for the uh, lack of uploads last week, um, I only did one upload instead of two. Um, two reasons, um, one I've been struggling with the heat, <laughs> number two it's, we've just had a lot on here uh, with appointments and things. Um, as you know the bathroom was being redone and stuff as well so there was lots of stuff to do with that and of course I've been doing um, the administration on a heart for London um, so the drop for a heart for London was last Saturday so obviously it's been very very busy so I'm going to do an update about everything at the end of the video so if you're just here for the craft stuff then obviously you can just watch that and then you can skip the life update if you don't want it so Today we're looking at this little one, little bunny. Not quite sure that I got the ears positioned quite right, but hey ho. Uh, but I think it's quite cute. So, first things first, the pattern is by Happy Berry Crochet. Um, she has a website which is uh, www happyberry.co.uk um, she does have a youtube channel as well and she's i think she's happy berry or happy berry crochet she's one of the two on youtube and um, this was a free pattern that i downloaded off her website oh quite some time ago um and it's just called amigurumi bunny that's what her one looked like that's the name of it and there's her website there for those that want it so, the materials I used, um, it's just three colours, it's a nice um, sort of scrap buster one if you've got some small cakes. Um, I used, now uh, her pattern called for um, a two and a half millimetre hook, um, I actually used a three millimetre hook, I've been keeping it in my project bag. I've shown before which was from um, the Scented Bag Company based here in the UK. Um, yes, so I, I upped my size because um, her pattern said to use um, double knit or if you're in the US to use a light worsted weight. Um, thing with Marina yarns, um, they tend to work up a, a little bit thinner than some of the other DK brands um, so I made it a little bit Instead of using a four millimeter hook, which I normally do for DK, um, I've, I've downsized it to three just to ensure that the stuffing doesn't come out, and that that seems to have been been about right. So I'm going to go through the yarns and then sort of talk through how it's um, constructed. So for the for obviously for the head, for the paws, feet, and ears, and the centre of the flower, um, I've done them all in uh, Marina double knit. Um, and it's the colour C-071 and it's called cream. The code may have changed. I think this is one of the older ones, but cream is cream. So basically a cream double knit. Uh, for the uh, the body and obviously the sleeves, this bit here, and obviously for the flower, I've used Marina double knit again. And this time it was shade C-023 in turquoise. I'm not sure if they do this colouring what I haven't seen it recently um, so I'm not sure if this uh, this colour is still made by Mariner um, but you know a pale blue anything would work wouldn't it um, I, I kind of went with what she got because I just kind of liked that colour um, of course she could make it pink or purple or anything it doesn't have to be those colours necessarily um, and then uh, for the just for the eyes a little bit of black um, I've been trying to use this little K cut. Um, this was some of the yarn that I had for Sean the Sheep that I made. Um, so this is King Cole Price Wise Double Knitting. Just stop the glare if I can. There we go. I've got the curtains open and it's very hot here. <laughs> um, so uh, the shade is 48 
and it's black and all these yarns are 100% acrylic um, so the way this is constructed now I can't remember whether I, st I think I started at the head let me just check because it's been a couple of weeks since I did this yes so you start basically at the top of the head um, this is all worked in um, single crochet in US terms double crochet in UK terms the pattern is written in US terminology even though she is English um, herself she's like me she just works in US terminology because clearly it makes sense to her as well um, so um, you start at the top um, it's all worked in the round um, it's just basic increases and decreases in the round so you increase the head decrease it um, you then do you carry the head and the body all worked as one piece um, so you do obviously a color change and then work down to the bottom and then it's stitched up at the bottom um, and then for the feet you start at the base of the feet increase decrease um, and a little bit of the body colour I do believe let me just check that was for look at, not look at the body and look at the feet doesn't it I should have checked this pattern before I came on camera it's my fault I do apologise everybody um, yes yeah, so on the feet um, it was just the very last round you, you put the alternative colour um, so there's just one round for the turquoise on the um, legs, feet, whatever you want to call them. Um, hands, well, hands, arms, whatever you want to call. Same, same thing again. So you start with the cream, alternate. Obviously, do slightly. You do basic increases, change the colour, and then you're decreasing. Um, the feet and the arms obviously have to be stitched on. Obviously the head and the body are one piece, so if you don't like attaching heads to bodies, this is a good pattern for you. Um, the flower was done, started in the middle for the cream and then it was just, um, now I can't remember whether it was double or triples. The flower was using... Right, so it was... Um, the, for the flower there are some trebles that's US terminology so that's um, double trebles in UK terminology um, it's pretty straightforward I think if you know how to do a basic flower it's pretty simple um, and then the ears um, again you start these are worked in the round so you start at this end of the ear and then you're doing increases and they're basically decreased down and then there's some just straight crochet rows as well and they're just attached on i think i should have possibly sewn them on a bit more forward i think i think perhaps if i'd stitched them perhaps they were there a bit more rather than they're sort of a bit further back i don't know i'm not i couldn't make my mind up where to put them um the only thing i really will say wasn't many um, instructions for sewing so there, there wasn't really any guidance exactly where to put the ears so I was trying to go by her photograph but it's only a small picture on the pattern um, so that is one thing I found confusing um, the other thing with um, happy berry crochet patterns is when she works in the round um, she'll slip slip she'll get you to chain one at the beginning of each round obviously to bring the height up which is absolutely fine where a lot of crochets would just slip stitch into the first stitch of that round and just miss the chain she actually gets you to slip stitch in the chain um i'm not sure why and it i was a bit confused whether with the stitch count you were supposed to include that 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 slip stitch into the chain she didn't actually say in the pattern so um i know some patterns she has said that um and of course then you know your stitch count is right um, so I'm not 100% sure whether my stitch count was off by one all the time. Um, 
I'm not, I really don't know. So that that was one issue. So if you're like a real newbie to making amigurumi toys, I probably wouldn't suggest this one. It's certainly for intermediate to to further up. Um, I'm, I mean, I must admit for the the feet, I just slip stitched into the first stitch. I stopped slip stitching the chain one because it was just confusing me. So. Where I was doing the chain one, I don't know if you can see it on camera, there's sort of this line going down here. So that's where all the chain ones were. So I don't know, I'm not really sure why she does that. I'm, I'm sure there is some technical knowledge and perhaps those of you that are more advanced than me might be able to enlighten me. But um, yeah, that was the only thing that really confused me about the pattern. Other than that, it's very well written. Um, like I said, it doesn't tell you where to position stuff. But then, to be fair, a lot of patterns don't. Um, the only other stitch you need for this is knowing, obviously, how to single crochet two together. All that single crochet two. Single crochet two together in US terms. Double crochet is it two together in UK terms. I'm sorry, it's very hot here. <laughs> <laughs> and my brain's not used to the heat um so that's it so it's it's quite a simple little bunny i, I did it in i think well, it's over the course of a week i mean you could probably do it in a day or maybe two depending on how much time you spend on it um but it's pretty pretty quick to do um the mouth is just um a cross stitch with the turquoise but i think it's pretty quick cute um, needless to say, this will be going off to Woolly Hugs as part of their Belarus project. So this will be going to a child that doesn't have anything for Christmas. Um, so I thought this would be really cute for a little girl. Um, I haven't done the classic pink because I just think not all little girls like pink. I know most do, but not all. Um, I just thought it was really cute. So I think it's come out quite well. What do you think? Um, so, uh, life update. Um, so that's it for the craft bit so if you're not interested in the life update then uh, I'll thank you for watching I'll see you next week um, so life update um, the bathroom is finished and so we have a, a brand new bathroom um, the only thing that they didn't change was the toilet but there's nothing wrong with it so um, it's all been decorated the decorator got paint everywhere all over the new sink all over the new bath all over the new flooring um, he just didn't cover things properly when he was decorating so we did have to get them to come back out and um, had to talk to the landlord the landlord got them to come back out and scrape a lot of it off but there are still bits of paint we're finding everywhere so I think it's going to be a bit of a clear up job for over a period of time I'm sure you all understand where I'm coming from other than that it looks really really nice so we're really pleased with it and um, we're just waiting on one piece of equipment to be delivered so that my friend that I care for can um, use the shower part as well um, so we're just waiting on equipment um, but other than that it's all sorted so that's good um, yes uh, what else have I got to tell you I'm trying to think um, it's well if, if if you haven't heard those of you in the UK will be well aware what's going on but um, this week we basically had a heat wave in the UK with temperatures hitting over 30 degrees certainly in the region that I'm in um, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit over I know a lot of you in the States begin ah that's nothing but trust me over here in the UK in our homes we don't have air conditioning um, we just have windows and very small fans um, so when it does get hot um, apart from going into air conditioned shops um, it's pretty unbearable so it's been very very hot it's been very hard to um, think straight <laughs> um, it's been quite hectic this week as well so um, my friend had a hospital appointment and uh, so we've taken us to that and we had to sit in the, the waiting area um, where she was overheating because she's um, very sensitive to heat and yeah it was a bit of a nightmare it was so hot because hospitals in the uk are always heated year on through because people in the wards need to be kept warm because they're not moving about but of course they don't put aircon in the um outpatients bit so you sit there and you cook um our hospital where i live um is well over 40 years old so um 
I don't think they'll be putting things like air conditioning any time soon because I think it'd be too expensive. So, um, so yeah, we've been doing that. Um, yeah, I've had Hearts for London. That was the other thing I needed to tell you. Uh, yeah, Hearts for London happened uh, last Saturday, just gone. Um, we had a bit of a nightmare because we had, we've got six administrators. Um, two were in London handing out Hearts. Uh, with 28 other volunteers so we had a good turnout for volunteers for handing out hots to the public hanging them up for the public to take and this was in the Borough Market and London Bridge area which is where the second terror attack in London happened um, yeah so that went really really well but two of our admin um, I mean, I'm very privileged that these ladies, these five ladies, I didn't know two weeks ago and are now my friends. So it's been a huge blessing doing doing this group, although it's been, been hard work. Um, yeah, and two of them were poorly on the day um, and they were trying to help me man things online because people were showing photographs they'd, they'd found. There was um, one... Um, newspaper picked up on the story which was the evening standard online so there was that as well to obviously be publishing and stuff on the twitter feed and then the facebook feed and so on um and the other lady who does the admin um she's very heritably pregnant she's also got a little girl so she kind of had her hands full so there was me um and predominantly the two ladies that were um not well on the day manning stuff um but very pleased to say that um around about lunchtime on saturday we did get to number six on the trending on twitter um which i'm sure for those of you that know about twitter that's no mean feat so um we're really really chuffed um that we've got enough people talking about it and uh, we still got um a few hearts that are still haven't been claimed down in the area um, so if you are from the London area and you want to go and have a look, I, I have been told there still are some hearts hanging up. So, you know, please go and take one if you're from, from that area or even if you're visiting that area. Um, but yeah, on the whole, it's gone really, really well. I had, for my personal, um, on the tags that I did, I did actually tag my casualistic um, Twitter or Facebook because it's all the same thing on uh, all the media stuff. So um, I've had the pink sparkly one and the small red one and um, so two of the smaller hearts that I did um, I know have been claimed and um, both men funnily enough um, and have both um, messaged me via Twitter to say thank you and the, how much it meant to them so that was really nice and um, I don't know if the others have been taken I haven't heard but that's not really what it was about um, but it's nice to know that a couple of people have got them so it was kind of yeah got the warm fuzzy feeling inside so that was nice uh, but we've had so much positive feedback um it has been truly wonderful so those of you that did send in hearts for a heart to london i really appreciate it and thank you very much for from not only me but from the rest of the um admin team as well um so we will be if you're interested in the heart for london um, we will be planning a second drop uh which will be um at the westminster bridge area which was the, where the first terror attack happened this year um, and many of you will remember that a police officer was also stabbed in that area um, there was quite a lot, lot lots of people obviously passed away have been injured and so on so uh, we want to honor the first attack we felt that we needed to do both it's um we're concentrating on cent central london and um, because london is such a, a massive area um and to be honest i think as a, a team we've we're all quite busy people and uh, so we came to the agreement that we just concentrate on central London and then if anyone wanted to set up groups to cover the re more recent Finsbury Park attack that happened just a few days ago um, which was actually an English person attacking Muslims so we've got terror attacks working both ways which I just think is appalling and disgusting and that's all I'm going to say on the matter um, so um, I think there are, I think there's a WI group in the area for Finsbury Park that are going to be distributing 
I think hearts and yellow ribbons is what I've heard so I don't know any more of that so if you know any more about that then do let me know because obviously I can advertise it on my Facebook and Twitter and stuff um, yeah so we haven't got a date for the Westminster drop and we're just trying to sort out a postal address because we need something that's nearer to that area um, so that all we can you know everyone can meet and then hand out um, I don't know whether I'm going to be going to that probably not because it, train tickets are ridiculously expensive and I don't think I'm going to be able to manage to afford it so which is a bit gutting but hey I can man the Twitter and Facebook and stuff with the other admin so um, yeah all in all it's been really positive we had a really good reaction from the public um, so that's been really really wonderful to be involved with um, yes, yeah, so that's that's it for the Heart for London. Um, yeah, and it's just been heat wave really. I can't really think what else. I've just been really busy, but it's just been things like appointments, um, stuff like that. Tomorrow I'm helping. Today is Wednesday. I'm losing track of the days. Um, so tomorrow uh, I will be helping. Um, I've got my, my friend's dad is coming over to my mum's so we've got two massive trees that we really need to cut down because they've got really tall and my mum can't manage them I can't be there all the time to manage it so we're going to cut those trees down which is kind of sad because my nana planted them many years ago but yeah so I'm feeling a bit sad about it but it's practicalities isn't it so my mum's getting older and I'm obviously tied here a lot so be doing that tomorrow so it's been a bit of a hectic week all in all and with the heat of course it's just exhausting um i know those of you that are in the uk have been suffering just as much as i have um so yeah so um that's kind of it really for today uh i've been given some more yarn uh my mum's neighbor um who um, was recently widowed um, you will remember that I've already been to two funerals in the last month um, my, that was one of the funerals that I've been to for, for Brian so um, his wife um, she's primarily a knitter um, but she doesn't have so much time for it now um, so she's been having a big sort out so I've got a massive bag that I've been given this morning um, only one of them has labels so my question to you is do you want to see that yarn if you do, I will share it on the next video uh, before I try and find somewhere to put it. <laughs> I'm running out of space. Um, so that's a possibility for the next video. Um, or I could do a yarn haul from Jan, uh, which I'm probably going to have to break up into two, three bits because she did send she sent me quite a lot over the last few months um, as she's been having to clear out for her stash and the stuff she's been given to me will ball primarily be used for woolly hugs um, and then um, the other thing I could show you is the down the rabbit hole rabbit, down the rabbit hole shawl <laughs> um, because I finished that and that again has been made with donated yarn from Carol so let me know down in the comments which of those three you would like to see at the weekend and that's what I will do I will go with the majority um yeah because i'm not really sure whether to do a yarn or what to, i'm i'm a bit all over the place at the moment um i'm sorry that my youtube has suffered a little bit because of the heart for london but i hope you understand that it's obviously something that i just feel is really really important to overcome the hatred that's been caused by these terror attacks just to prove that there are those of us in the real world who are loving and kind and generous because i know you all are all of you are watching me because you're crafters and crafters are always kind and generous people so I know you're I know you're a good person so you let me know what you want to see in the next video and that's what I'll do and like I say I'll go with the majority vote so that's it for today um, I hope you enjoyed that um, short but sweet on the craft side but it was only a little rabbit so there's not an awful lot to kind of go into um, so I wonder how is the weather where you are are you melting <laughs> wherever you are in the states i know if you're in australia you're probably shivering because it'll be winter there but <laughs> um yeah what's going on in your lives i'd love to know and what are you uh, working on craft wise 
Um, it's always nice to interact with you. I love getting your comments and I do always reply to my comments. So if you do comment, you will you will get a response from me. So don't think that it's a wasted thing if you do. Um, yeah, so I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up because that helps my channel as well. And of course, subscribe if you're not subscribed. <laughs> I'm going to do a plug this time because I don't do it very often, do I? Um, so that's it for today. I um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, so like I say, I'll, I will be planning to do an upload at the weekend. So I don't know which day it will be, but it will be at the weekend. And Sean, if you're watching, I'm very glad that you've decided to still do some videos at least. Because I was very sad. My my friend Sean, Sean's Crafty Corner, those that you've been with me for a while will know. Um, she's a fellow YouTuber and one of, one of my closest friends. And uh, she decided to sh stop her channel. And it made me very, very sad. Um, but she's actually changed her mind so she's just going to be doing intermittent videos which I'm really chuffed about because at least she's still going to be there so yay Sean thank you I'm really happy <laughs> so yeah so that was good news so anyway I'm waffling so I'm going to go so until next time remember to stay well happy crafting and remember until next time to stay true to yourself bye